Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into the Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble, and I am here with Audrey Marshall from Thematic. And I'm really excited to learn about what her platform can do for musicians, how it's built to help creators. And um, I'm always looking to bring people on the show that are creating new and cool ways for musicians to make money and get their you know word out about their music and build their fan base and everything. And so we'll get into that in a minute. I just wanted to find out um, from you, Audrey, as we get started, like, I know that you have a huge passion to help musicians, and I'd love to know where that came from. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Um, I think I just grew up around music. My family is not necessarily super musical, but I've always been a huge music fan. Like I grew up in the era of like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and all of that amazing, amazing time of music. And it really, you know, my musical, you know, my favorite musical artist changed over time, but even through high school, you know, I'd always be following, uh, you know, a band or going to the concert or like trying to pass out like street team flyers of like, oh my gosh, I love these artists. How can I help them get discovered by new, new people? Um, so even in college, you know, one of my first internships, I reached out to a couple of my favorite artists at the time. And I was like, I'd love to learn from you. How can I help support you? And really just started working with them on a one-on-one level. Um, two different artists and one of them was part of this independent record label and I got to be part of her like DIY album release really just started understanding like distribution platforms this was in like 2008 2009 and how that worked um and it was at that independent record label where I met my now co-founder uh, Mark Shrubelgen who co-owned the label and we just started really getting in on like what are new strategies what are new digital strategies to help support music artists and you know ever since then we've been working together to kind of unlock that that nut and figure it out of like there are new avenues and ways to get this music out there we started working with our other co-founder Michelle Fawn who was the premier beauty influencer of her era um, and placing music in her videos and seeing the success and seeing how that that catapulted you know new listeners and fans and followers for the music artists. That's all very cool. So first of all, who are the artists that you got a chance to work with as an intern? Sure. Some of my favorite artists in high school or college uh, were Giant Drag, which was this indie grunge alternative rock band. Loved it. And then totally, I'm, I'm like all over the place when it comes to my musical taste, um, is this amazing singer songwriter who now goes under the name Ames. And she's just like brilliant. She's doing so much uh, interesting work and like just an amazing talent. Mm, very cool. Yeah. I, I have a very diverse love for music as well. So like, you know, I love that you you're all over the board with that and, and mentioning the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC are totally different from those things. Totally right? different. It's definitely evolved over the years. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cause then I think we can be passionate about all sides of the music industry, which is great. So I wanted, so first of all, let's get to the heart of what thematic does. Cause I honestly don't, no yet. So I'm looking forward to hearing like, you know, what was the idea behind this? Like, what was the problem you were trying to solve for musicians and how does thematic do that? Sure. So uh, back in that early era of 2008, 2009, when we were trying to figure out new avenues to get music out there, we really started to see that as a fruitful measure. So Michelle Fawn, as an example, was one of the creators we were working with and she would always come to us and be like, Hey, you guys have, you guys work with music artists. Like I'm you know, making this beach summer video, I need a cool artist to feature. Like, I don't really want to use Pond 5. I need something that's, you know, entertaining and vibrant. 
And so we were like, well, we have this artist who has this amazing song, like, let's make this connection happen. And so over the years, we really just started to hone in on that. And we've evolved the, the business in that regard to being more of like an MCN of the time, like one of the early YouTube MCNs, where we were working hands on with a, a handful of independent music artists and different YouTube video creators, and constantly sitting at this intersection of like either side, just asking us like, hey, I just released this new single, like, how can I get it out there? Like I put it out, but I don't know what the, what my next step is. I don't know how to get it. I can't afford to do a big marketing campaign. And we're like, well, we're working with this other beauty influencer, this soccer influencer, and they need this great song. And really just identifying almost on a music supervision level of like for the content creators, these are great songs that you should be featuring. And then the artists on the other side are, are finding opportunities to get their music Placed without having to go and just do blind outreach to influencers or try to get a budget to get a, you know, a product placement in their video essentially for their song. And really just like both of these people traditionally would charge each other for the service. So if, as an influencer, they'd be like, yeah, I'll feature your brand. You know, it's X amount of rate, you know, for my reach. And the music artist, you know, on the content creator side, you know, like, hey, I want to use this song. And the music artist would be like, great, there's this sync fee and you got to go through all this. And it's super complicated for an average, you know, video creator. And we're like, well, why don't we just bring you guys together and like make this a one-to-one -one value exchange where you're both solving your own problem. So we were doing this in like a very manual matchmaking capacity. Um, and after our co-founder, Michelle Fawn, went through a, a public lawsuit regarding music rights in her earliest YouTube videos, she came down from that, you know, she's able to get through it, but she came with the sentiment of like, I don't want any other creator to have to go through what I just went through. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the music artists were like, I had nothing to do with this. This is all my label. Michelle's done more for me than like anyone. So there was still the value of both these parties wanting to come together. And Michelle, um, invested in us and we put it into a product so we could do what we were doing in this very manual capacity for many more people than just like, you know, what we could handle on a one-on-one -on -one basis. That is very cool. And what year did you guys start this company? I think we officially, you know, incorporated in 2016, okay. but we were in a private uh, a testing area for like, you know, a few years. Um, and essentially just to sum it up, like for the music artists, it's free influencer marketing for their music. They can get their music featured in YouTube videos, launch a song campaign for totally free, like no charge. And on the video creator side, it's almost like automated music supervision. Here's the best music from the hottest new artists based on what you're creating and what your favorite musical tastes are, what your aesthetic is. Got it. And so what kind of lead time do you need? Cause I'm thinking about this going, you know, I've got a holiday album and, you know, I'm thinking that would be totally great for this. How early are people looking for something that's kind of theme based like holidays or like maybe summer music or spring music? Totally. I, I love that you have that built into you, uh, your mindset of like, Hey, we got to gear up for this. We should not release this on Christmas. Right. There's right. a window of time. Um, so when we're looking at that, it's fun because like I, you know, in the past 10 years, I've done so much managing YouTube channels and understanding the content creator workflow. So we have a good insight onto when that process starts. So when we're talking about, say, Christmas or holiday season, uh, a good thing to keep in mind for music artists is they have this um, tradition of doing Vlogmas, which is one video a day in like every day of December, or at least up till Christmas or the first 12 days, I think everyone makes it their own. So there's a huge influx and demand for that content, but the creators start producing it about Thanksgiving or earlier. So we're trying to onboard or think about getting a lot of holiday music in and say like late October, early November, or curating new playlists. Um, so artists can submit as early as like now but we obviously would want to time the release in in to make it make sense because there's no sense in putting out like a rudolph song in the middle of august okay so when you say release like i i could load my songs in there now but you could time like okay these are gonna quote come out on the platform in october and like somehow that's gonna get them in front of more people it's like you know it's kind of a like a release on spotify or whatever where it's like this release radar like shows up for everybody and they're like oh this new song is here is that kind of how it works 
Exactly. Yeah. So uh, we launch them as song campaigns. So some artists like to do it on the day of the release and have that song be available as soon as it hits Spotify because they want to supercharge their distribution and promotion of that new song. And then some artists are like, hey, I have this song who maybe I, I released six months ago, but it's like I want to have it released, meaning on like Spotify, but like, hey, I don't want to launch the song campaign until I'm finished with my other song campaign or I'm in the middle of other promotions. It really differs on an artist by artist basis, but we definitely want to make sure that the music being serviced to the video creators is timely and relevant. And it's not just like, you know, random. So we do that both mix of like algorithmically and editorially. Okay. So when you say served to the creators, they go in there and do they type in like a keyword or something? And then, you know, stuff comes up. Sure. So I'm really excited about this part of it. So we do uh, like instant matching. So we learn about the creator as they're signing up, like what's their YouTube channel? What is the content they're creating? What are their favorite types of music? Like who are their, you know, people in their circle that they're followed to on the music artist or creator side. And from that, we're able to curate for them. Um, We do a section called weekly matches, which is like 10 of the songs that are most relevant to them. That's going to perform well in their type of content that fits their musical aesthetic. So it's like we serve that up along with like a handful of playlists and then any of the new releases by artists that they're following. So it's a matter of, they can log in and essentially get uh, their Discover Weekly, you know, equivalent from Spotify of like, hey, here's what's relevant to you based on what you're creating and who you are and really fast track the discovery experience because that's a huge pain point for video creators. It's like, I have to listen to 10,000 songs to find that good one. You know, what is a genre anyways? Um, but, and if the creator is looking for something specific, we do have a whole filter experience where they're like, hey, I need something that's lo-fi, that has no vocals, that's this beat or this mood. We have all of that, but we find a lot of creators find success with the, the matching. Got it. And that's really neat. Um, so can they type in a word? Cause I know for me, uh, and I want to get into this in a minute, but like when I'm creating on TikTok, I'm like, is there a song that like has this word in it? Or like, I, I think I was doing one on like haters and I'm like, I want, is there a song that like talks about haters? You know, I don't know. I don't know any songs like that. So I just typed that in and like some stuff came up. I was like, Oh, this is cool. I can put this in here. So can you do that in your platform too? We can, I would say we're still, we're still improving it. So like, I know curation, I think is an endless pursuit of trying to get that faster. Um, But we definitely want to make it as easy as possible. And we tie it a lot around video themes. And it's like really interesting from that perspective, even on the music artist side to understand the communities or the types of videos being created with the music, right? So Mm -hmm. like, if I'm a hip hop instrumental producer, I may be like, well, my audience is dudes or like these type of people or this type of audience who are of this age but what we find is very uh they're able, they're very surprised a lot of the time where that guy may be like oh my gosh my music does really well in makeup videos like that's a market <laughs> I never would have targeted like I never would have done Facebook ads to that but there seem to be resonating and like you know I should hit up Revlon and see if we can get a brand deal going here because there's obviously a resonance and like like-mindedness so we're constantly in terms of figuring out and connecting songs to themes and topics and video ideas and just keywords of like summer I need a summer song like maybe the song doesn't say the word summer in it but like how could we better match that and be like this is the perfect beachy vibe right exactly right that's cool. And, and I love that, like, they could, like you said, they could get like proof of concept that like people like their song for makeup videos, which they never would have thought of. And they can do that through this platform. And then they could go and approach a specific company for like a bigger brand deal. So that's, that's really cool. And they can be like, Hey, look, it's been used in these other videos already. Exactly. Exactly. It's all about getting that, like, it's a testing ground. A lot of people put in a few songs and then realize like, Hey, this one's catching a lot of fire. I should put additional resources here, or I want to, you know, level up on this. It's all about giving them the choice and the information. So instead of just like, you know, for a lot of campaigns for music artists, they, they put music somewhere and they're like, great, we're going to promote it, but maybe they don't really know where it ends up. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just kind of out there. Like, I know it's doing something. I'm seeing my Shazams and Spotify is going up. 
Um, so we knew we're like the data and the information about who is using it and how they're using it is super important. So we be sure to load that in. The artists have a full dashboard where they can see the stats of how many videos, which songs are picking up traction, what are the types of creators, what playlists am I being featured in? Yeah, and I know the artists would want to get that out there too. Like if their song is being featured in something that's cool, they're going to want to let their list know. They're going to want to put it on social media and drive people there. And that only helps the influencer. Totally. Yeah. I love seeing it when like the artists are commenting on the creators and the creators are following them on Instagram. And like, it's more than just like, Hey, my song's in your video or like we made this deal for this. It's really about, we're really about the community and like, how do we bring these people together in an intuitive and organic way? That's not me being like, Hey, you have to use this song and then fit it into your video or like, it's that it's not as fun when you're doing it. it you know it happens all the time but it's uh it's definitely fun to see the organic results of what we're doing right definitely um so okay first of all is youtube the only video platform that you're working with here or are there other ones so we started with youtube i haven't uh i'm like a specialist in digital rights management specifically for music on youtube and they do have an infrastructure for rights management um, content ID, which is both a blessing and a curse. There's <laughs> pros and cons, but we've we've found a way to integrate it with our platform that makes it a really seamless collaboration. So YouTube is kind of our, our bread and butter. That's where I know how to optimize content and manage digital rights. And that's where obviously our co-founder, Michelle Fawn, blew up and got her start. So we focused on that to begin with, but also Instagram. And later this year, we'll be looking at other platforms. For us, it's always about how do we make sure the exchange of value is there for both sides, the video creators and the music artists? Because if we're all of a sudden like, hey, we're going to do it for, you know, Twitch streams or we're going to do it for podcasts or whatever that next thing is an audio book. Like, how do we ensure that there is a, a proper exchange of value and no one's abusing the system in terms of like, hey, you didn't give the required credit to the music artist. Like, mm -hmm. what's the penalty or, or like, how do we enforce that so one side is not getting gypped or getting copyright claims or getting their videos taken down if the music rights aren't settled on other platforms? Yeah, that's what I was wondering about because I mean, so you've got the content ID built in. So if when the influencer puts the song in, they're not immediately getting a copyright strike or, you know, totally. that kind of thing. Okay. Totally. We knew that was like a huge, you know, bummer when somebody goes and they do all the right things I... and they get a license and they're like, why am I still dealing with a copyright claim here? Like, it's just frustrating. It's not a part of the creative flow. So we built it in. So it's all preventative. As long as the creator has the proper credit and license information and promotion for the artist included, like they will never see a claim. Like mm -hmm. they are good and golden. Um, we do make sure, you know, if they, they forget, people forget. We have a reminder system in place for like, hey, you got to put this in. But if there's ever an instance where a creator is using the song and they just fail to give the credit for whatever reason, um, we go ahead and monetize that video for the music artist. So there is a checks and balances system. And then obviously anybody who just doesn't have a license at all gets claimed and monetized for the music artist as well. Got it. Now, how does it work with something like Instagram? You said you were starting to work with Instagram. Instagram already has the ability to put music in, in reels and stories, right? You can go do that through Spotify. So is that like, conf is like confusing to have like two different ways that you could put music in or is it done through your platform and not through Instagram, you know, the way you would do it with the Spotify? That's a great question. I think it is talking about two different types of use cases. So okay. when we're talking about like a purposeful or intentful content or somebody's releasing something across multiple platforms, they're usually editing their video maybe outside of the platform and mm. bringing it to that platform. Um, you also, I think you talked about this earlier, we're on TikTok, you're like, well, I don't know what song to use. Should I just use the trending song? Like you're just using what's being served to you, but you still as a creator have to make the decision of like, what's, what do I want to do? Does this fit me? And you're sorting through, like, if you go to Spotify, you're like, which song should I listen to? Right. If it was just a repository, you're like, I don't know where to start. I guess I'll just start clicking around. Um, but what we like to do is again, reduce the, the time and friction where you're like, hey, here are songs that are relevant to me from new artists who I can support and then I can feature them. So we find a lot of crossover between uh, YouTube and Instagram, especially as a promotional engine of like, hey, I just dropped a YouTube video. 
I'm going to do a story about it on Instagram and that's going to be an excerpt of the YouTube video and promote it. Or it's a reel that complements it as a teaser um, and viewing it as like a distribution channel uh, versus like, I'm just trying to like get going. But as we're looking toward other platforms, it's a matter of, you know, it could be either a combination of servicing it through the app in a native way, like on Instagram, mm -hmm. or it could be more of like, hey, we've cleared a set of music for a platform that maybe doesn't have a central hub for music to be serviced. I see. Okay. So if they recorded the video in a separate app, like you said, not inside of Instagram, and then they were putting a clip in there, would they just be expected to give the artist credit and maybe tag them or something? Yeah, we do. Like, again, it's like, what makes sense for the music artist? Like links do no good on Instagram for right. anybody. Right. And it's like so hard to enforce and track if it's in their bio or, um, that situation. So on Instagram, we look at more of an at mention system. So we're able to identify like, Hey, you have to include an at mention for the artist. And so they're instantly notified and they have some sort of accountability for what's being created. Yeah. And, and I think that's, it's good. Like I know that if I, when, if I get an at mention, a lot of times I'll get a bunch of followers from it, you know, exactly. so that's worth something to them. Totally. Yeah. We see like, you know, 80% of our artists have said like my, my social media following has increased from using the platform because it is, we're, we're requiring there to be some connection and integration um, with the artist channels. Cool. Okay. So now it, from the artist side, if they are uploading their songs or putting their songs onto thematic do they put the full song? Do they choose like segments, you know, like on TikTok where you have like 30 second or one minute segments of the song? Can they do all of the above? Sure. Great question. Um, so right now when they upload, they upload the full song. Um, we gate it so that anyone who's not logged into the platform doesn't get the full experience. They have to log in to be able to, so they're not just like using us as a streaming platform. That's not why we're here. Right. Um, but they can upload the full song. We are looking at adding alternate versions of songs, so like instrumentals. I know a lot of people like slowed down versions, you mm -hmm. know, there's different edits that they're releasing. So we're looking at adding that as well as doing pre-segmented clips for social platforms. So that may be coming probably maybe quarter four, I would say, in terms of making it just like, what are additional options? So when we go to other platforms and we are servicing other um, video platforms or audio experience platforms, we can highlight to the creator, like, hey, here, here's the best clip that you should use for this platform or it's pre-cut. But right now we find that we just provide the full track, uh, high resolution if it's uploaded in high resolution and then the artist also needs to specify like where do you want us to to drive this traffic from the youtube video so they can select a spotify music player their latest youtube video a soundcloud and they can adjust this at any time so then when new people are discovering their music from watching these videos mm. we're driving the streams where they want it and they can also check out all the other social links from the music artists got it okay um, so I know that you're, you specialize in, in YouTube. Do you have like a particular like certification or like, what did you learn? It sounds like you had to learn a lot about music rights in order to be able to do this confidently. Yeah. So I, I'm one of those people who's like constantly learning of like, what's the next thing I want to master it. I want to be really good at it. So, um, even back in like the early 2010s, uh, it's weird to think that the 2010s were a separate decade from now. But I know, right? <laughs> like what the heck? Um, we were one of the first in like that initial company before starting Thematic, we had our hands on one of the first music label CMS. So like content ID for music with additional audio visual capabilities um, on YouTube. And so I just kind of learned and taught myself a lot of like understand the infrastructure but then YouTube also came out with a certification program, and I believe it was 2013, 2014, where you just kind of get the nuts and bolts of like how content ID works, how to best manage and, you know, assets on YouTube, how to best, you know, here are the best tried and true strategies for YouTube channels. So it was a combination of like learning both the digital rights side of it and how to work with that in a space like YouTube. But at the same time, I was also managing YouTube channels. We built up a lot of like content creator channels, makeup channels, dance channels on YouTube, music artist channels. How am I optimizing content? What strategies are working 
uh, I'm an analytics nut. So like tracking like, hey, this strategy worked or if you do this, you're gonna supercharge your discovery on this video. So kind of learning the both sides of it, both of like digital rights management and how that works and like using, doing the certifications, you know, year over year, whenever they would expire, they'd come out with new programs, but then also just learning from the creation process and learning from creators of like, hey, this is working. And this is how this is playing with that. So it's always been a, a fun discovery mm-hmm. flow. Yeah, definitely. You probably know more than almost any musician <laughs> about that kind of stuff. I think we're, we're usually groping in the dark. It's like, we, you know, we know that they're tracking us. I've had some musicians experience where like they were, they actually got copyright strikes against themselves. Oh my gosh. It happens. So I feel like there's <laughs> I think everyone in life should go through a course, especially because it's a scary thing. You get this email. It's like your video has been claimed. Like uh-huh. it's, it feels scary, especially if it's your first time running into it. And I'm like, it is scary if you don't understand the infrastructure of it. And it's like, obviously how can we educate more? So we have constantly, I mean, I'm always talking to our artists and they're like, well, why is it? I was like, I got you. Let's talk about it. Let's jump on a call. Like, <laughs> you know, I want them to be able to feel comfortable and to be all knowledgeable. And I feel like even music managers like don't really understand the infrastructure of content ID or what it means to allow this to channel and what's the long-term impact of this or what's happening behind the scenes when you switch distributors and are things falling through the cracks? Oh yeah. (laughs) And and it's obviously, it's hard to know about it if you don't have your hands on it and it's not a tool that's access to everyone because it's, you know, it's managed at a high level and typically through a distributor. So it's a matter of you know, how can we better get information out there? So then when they do make deals, they understand what's happening or what are the mechanics behind it? Or like, what does this actually mean uh, for when I'm using my music or putting up my own music video of like, mm-hmm. why am I being claimed for my own song? Or, hey, I should be claimed for my own song because it's the only way for me to monetize my video until I'm part of YouTube's partner program. Or Which is I- really hard, by the way, because I haven't right? made it yet. And I'm like releasing a podcast every week. So, you know, you'll get you there. Do? Consistency. <laughs> Consistency is key. Totally. And it's just like, you know, they've changed again, the partner program. I've seen every side or iteration of it from when they first launched and you had to apply each video for month. You had to oh literally every video make a right, written request of like, I can monetize this and I can wow. go through this. And then you have to be approved for it. And that's even after getting accepted to the program. And then they let anyone monetize for a period. And they're like, maybe this is not a good idea. Scoping it back. So it's, you know, it's, it's constantly iterating, but it's uh, definitely an achievement once you get there. And I'm, I'm confident you will get there with your channel (laughs) because consistency, quality content, like you check both boxes, you'll get there. I'm working on it. Um, I'm curious though, like with the rise of TikTok, and kind of the the built-in ability to add music to videos that wasn't there before, and then Instagram kind of copied that. Has that has that changed anything for you guys? I know the big thing for you guys, and I think that really where a lot of the value lies is the curation and the saving of time. Right. Sure. Yes. Um, and it's I would say TikTok. Like, there's always going to be a new platform. I think it's a great additional distribution and marketing strategy for music artists. Like you can't not acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. Um, We had this great success story of this artist, Nikki Yore, who released a couple songs on our platform, I think late last year and early this year. So one of those songs was Sunroof. So I think how he was able to distribute and accelerate that content was he put it on thematic and we started to get a social Um, swell of engagement right off the bat with the song. It's a great song. But then likewise, he was working the song on sunroof and doing a really cross promotional strategy there. And a lot of our creators on thematic would natively want to also use it on TikTok because it was a relevant song. And I Mm. think it's like one of the hottest songs I think to come off of TikTok this year. Um, I'm sure you've heard it if you've been scrolling on there, but it was just this amazing superpower of like content distribution from a music side of like you know a hit song is a hit song and it's like how do you get it out there and discovered and so people were resonating with it across the board right away so it was a great amplification strategy and what we also saw from that is a lot of the people on tiktok wanted to then cross post their tiktoks Mm -hmm. on youtube Mm -hmm. right and so the only way for them to be able to do that in a legal way is to get a license for the song and thankfully we had it available on our platform so that they're not getting penalized for sharing their TikToks. 
on YouTube, right? Because the music clearances don't transfer. There's different uh, mechanisms and infrastructure for using songs across platforms. Yeah, I wondered about that. I wonder how many people just take their thing from TikTok and put it on YouTube shorts and don't know that they're breaking rules. So many. And like, thank, <laughs> thankfully, again, there's there's content ID so the artists can monetize that. And there's like a balance system. And it's, you know, again, for the content creator, it's so confusing. You know, I see these messages all the time where I'm like, well, I just used, I got it from TikTok. Like, I don't understand what the problem is. And I'm like, I, you know, I wish I could talk to all of you, but there's thousands of you having this problem. Like, how can we fix that? And so that's, again, as we're looking to go to other platforms and how do we integrate with TikTok to make this easy for creators? Like, people just want to put content out there, whether it be a video or a song, and they just want it to be heard, seen, discovered engaged with and like there's all these friction points and I'm like let's just make it easier like these people want to help support each other these people want to just get their song heard and not you know oh it's blocked in this territory or well and even for musicians I mean the royalties and and all that stuff are so decentralized they're just all over the place and if they're going to just be in a centralized place and I know this is probably never going to happen because even if we were able, able to work it out in the US to like get it down to like a few places that you had to make sure that everything was set up so you got paid, there'd still be other countries and all of that, you know, but it just, it can right. be so mind blowing for the musician to keep track of all the places that they need to have registered their song and, you know, made sure to report this and report that to get paid what they are due. Totally. Yeah. I think, you know, it's such an industry of like, if we could build it over, yeah. to a very simple system I'm all for it but I'm like we're so far deep I can't imagine like prove me wrong like that would be amazing I'd it would be amazing it. right somebody came in and just like to- you know like we're starting over yeah just like tore it up threw it all down and then like rebuilt it from right? scratch that'd be amazing but I don't think that's going to happen like you said we're too far down the road in so many directions Right. And it's, you know, it's like, you know, it was built for one type of distribution and how we were handling music like ages ago. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, nobody could have accounted for how this is happening or this remix culture of like, I'm reacting to your video that features this song and the rights clearly aren't transferring between. um, I mean, even just accounting for the internet was hard enough, right? Seriously. I mean, yeah, exactly. That wasn't even built in. That's like this whole, yeah, they're like, oh, we're just, you know, all these band-aids and all of a sudden this person's just, you know, it's just covered in like band-aid fixes. You're like, oh, this is the world we live in. But again, it's like, how do we make it simpler? And in the, the ways that we are able to control or in the industries of like, you know, let's make it easy for these two people to work together, or let's make it easy for you to get your song out there and not like have this huge problem about it. And do you see that um, artists that are featured with, you know, for uh, through other creators and stuff are getting like a surge in Spotify listens? Totally. And we've done a study uh, across our artists and it's they're seeing about a 20 percent increase in listeners mm-hmm. and streams on Spotify, as well as, you know, if they're pushing to YouTube, it could be YouTube. But definitely across the board, we're seeing this lift. Um, and I think a true testament to that is like an artist who's like, I don't know if this is for me. It's not, I don't know if I, you know, I'm not sold on the model or they don't really understand it or it's something new that they have to try out. I'm like, listen, it's totally free. You can opt out after three months and be like, this is not my thing. Um, but what we find happen is they put in a song and we're like, let us just show you what we can do here. And then literally like within two weeks, they've uploaded their full EP or like their next three singles because they see it off the bat. Like we notify them like, hey, your video, your song was just featured in this video. Check it out. And that video can have, you know, it could be the biggest influencer on YouTube or it could be someone just starting out. We believe in the power of the masses of, you know, it's a different strategy. So it's like you could put all your bang and buck and put like, hey, I'm going to spend my entire budget and do this one, one influencer, this huge influencer. Um, in a traditional influencer marketing campaign. Or you can go out and be like, I need 300, 500, 1,000 people to start promoting my song because then you're having a bigger market reach and you're getting people from different industries, territories, verticals, communities, and really allowing your song to to thrive and succeed. Um, So it's definitely, you know, usually the case of like, they get that little, the result of it of like, hey, put your song out there on Spotify, you're getting no streams or you've gotten your, you've, you serviced it to your existing fans. Like what's next? And instead of like, Hey, maybe they don't have a marketing budget or maybe it's already allocated to a different campaign. 
we can still help them out and get it out there. And they, they see the success and they're able to track of like, oh my gosh, when, when this influencer featured it, I saw such an uptick mm. on my Spotify or like they engage with me on Instagram or like my Shazams are going through the roof. And it, it's just really fun to see. Um, Cause that's, you know, why we did this. We want them to succeed. We want their music to do well. And just like on TikTok, like songs that have been out for a while can be revitalized this way too, right? So it's you once your single is out for three months, you feel like, oh, now what, you know, it, that's it, that's the end, but it doesn't have to be the end. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. So like we have an opt-in term, like we're always about trying for the video creators to service the newest and most relevant songs. Cause it's a matter of, you know, artists have different song campaigns. So we try to do and achieve a level of success for every song that comes on the platform. And I think 99% of the songs on our platform have at least one influencer placement. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of, okay, great. How can we get this song out there and get it to a tipping level of success and like keep that going as long as they want to keep it going, but then also provide opportunities and ways for us to service their next single, right? Because it's like, how boring it would it be if it's like only your single from three years ago that's right. getting plays? Like, okay, I've created 20 new songs or like I have a lot more to offer. Like I've improved so much and being able to funnel those that new music to that same audience who already loves it and also get it in front of just new people and new opportunities. So we do have like a cyclical like campaign model, almost like a radio where it's like songs mm. are coming on. And then if an artist is like, you know what, I'm done, I'm this EP is a different identity. I'm moving on. They could put in their next one and then transition a song off. So we're not trying to tie up their music rights for years on end. It's, it's more of like a, a, a term, but if they want to keep it going, it's in their, you know, we're here to help support them. Got it. And they can, there's nothing keeping them from putting music that was released three years ago out if they don't have any new music. That's no problem at all. Okay. So as long as it's, you know, we're not here to get, you know, 50,000 old songs. Cause it's also like, how is that relevant for a video creator? Right. But we still have like older material from artists who are like, you know what, like I'm not doing a lot or like, Hey, this song, I don't feel like I gave it a lot of energy when it mm -hmm. came out. And I want to, I want to put it in again and see what we can do with it. And or really like maybe to... the theme of the song is very relevant right now. You know, exactly. say they have a song about gun, gun violence or something, you know what exactly. I mean? And it's like super relevant. Totally. Yeah. We see that happen all the time. Or like, it's really, it's really interesting to see how the users and the music artists are interacting. Cause now I've seen one of our music artists title his songs in ways that are very like similar to video titles. So like a song would be like travel vlog. And he, he's actually creating music that is inspired by the video creators featuring his music in a new work. So it's like this intuitive, like they're feeding off of each other and getting inspired by each other. Wow. At the same time, you have these video creators who are maybe creating, you know, I think one of the, uh, another huge problem of a video creator or any content creator is like, I've run out of ideas. Like I've mm. hit the internet, it's over. I've done everything I could think about to do. And that ideation process can be very restrictive. But we find that when they come to our platform, they're getting inspired by the songs, which is giving them new video ideas. And then we also feature, like they can discover, you know, we show them a song and we could show them, these are other videos that uh, have featured this song. And they usually get this spark of like, oh, I didn't think about doing a video about how to decorate shoes or whatever it may be, <laughs> right? But they're like, hey, I like this song. I don't really have a video idea, but I see that this song is, you know, it would be cool to feature in a video like this. And so utilizing it and again, how to having the creative community help each other just like in their creation process and in their marketing and distribution process. Now, do you have a maximum number of songs to be in a campaign from one artist at a time? Like they're not just going to go in there and upload their entire catalog, right? We have had that happen. Okay. Um, we tried it. We do new music releases every Friday. So we put out a, a cohort of songs um, we try to make sure there's a, a good variety of songs. And if an artist wants to, they're, they're putting all their chips into the thematic table, like we're here to support them, but we'll try to, you know, strategically release them in a way that's going to be most beneficial to them. Cause we want mm -hmm. every song to have its own moment. So again, it's like, if you put up 20 songs at one time, 
the create, you know, for the creator, like we'll try to match it as best as possible. But, you know, as soon as we get more data about who's using it, where it's being used, like we get to start sorting it and servicing it to the right creator. But it's also a matter of like, let each song have its moment, right? Like that's what yeah, it's do. like releasing singles versus an album, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly, right? Like we can eventually do a single for every song on the album, so to speak, mm-hmm. but it's just a matter of you want to give it its best shot. And then if one starts taking off in a, a way that you didn't expect, like that's going to steal the spotlight from maybe the others. Got it. And what about like very specific content like for example i have some songs that are christian songs like are there christian creators on there or like maybe your songs are in spanish or something like are there ways to identify that totally yeah so we do have this entire like filter and i think there's like 10 filters you can niche into if you're like trying to find like yo i usually like to do like odessa type you know really electronic inspiring stuff for travel vlogs but i'm making a video and i need there to be a salsa beat or it needs to feel like a world like different type of I need to be in French because I'm going to France or something like that they can filter through you know I, we're finding an increase of people trying to find things that are more of a, a certain aesthetic or vibe and less of a genre but we do have it available but we have like hey I'm, I'm looking for things that are from African artists and I'm like that's mm-hmm. a great request because it's not necessarily one language and it's not necessarily one genre of music it could span any genre and it could be any vocalist type but I'm like it's so interesting to think about how people are trying to figure out what's resonating with them of like hey Mm. I just want to support this type of artist or like I just want to support people who are doing bilingual content I'm like that's Mm. so cool so we're constantly learning and adding in new attributes for songs of like this is going to be more valuable than something else and not to take other filters away, but really just what are the nuances to how people are classifying music of, Hey, it's doing well in this type of content or like it's good for these environments um, and allowing them to discover that right fit match. And, and can you match by similar artists? Like if I were to say, Oh, my song is similar to Sarah McLaughlin and somebody was looking for something that was like Sarah McLaughlin, could they search for that? Totally. So on each artist profile, we have like the top um, similar artists for that artist. So you can easily just filter, you know, like, hey, like Ryan Little, you're probably going to like this other artist here. So we can identify that for you. But we also just put in that we're still in test mode of a similar sounding search. So you can drop in a YouTube link for your favorite song. And maybe we don't have that song on thematic, but we can give you songs available for you that match that same uh, song sentiment and audio. And it's really fun. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. Wow. I've gotten so much information about this and it's all very, very cool, but I have to ask you if it's free for the artist and it's free for the influencer, how are you guys making money in order to keep your platform going? Sure. So that was a question we really wanted to think smartly about. Um, One of our mantras was, how do we make this accessible to all types of creatives without putting a financial burden on it? You'll see a lot on the video creator side where it's like, hey, yeah, you can use that One Republic or Justin Bieber or you name it song, like a relevant song, but it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. And it's going to cost you even more if you have a huge audience. And again, it was like that friction point of like both sides were trying to charge each other to find mm-hmm. the same value point. So we, we wanted to make it accessible for any size of creator, whether they're the largest or the smallest. And so we studied in a free mode for, I think the first couple of years of the product to understand what the community values and what we could build that's gonna be equitable to everyone. So on the content creator side, there is a subscription for a premium service. So Mm -hmm. that gives them extra playlists. They can have multiple people working to find music for their channel. They can have additional YouTube channels and then they can get access to uh, the most discovered or trending songs on the site. And so it's this balance of identifying from a song campaign level of our job is to get songs to trend and get to a matter of relevance. But I think like we were talking about earlier of like, if that's the only song from three years ago that continues to drive attention from an audience, how do we make sure that their next new releases are getting discovered as well? And so it's this uh, 
award system of like once a song has reached a tipping level of success and is like the top 20% of our songs on the platform after a specific period of time, we'll go ahead and graduate that song with this award. It becomes a diamond song on our site and it becomes exclusive to uh, the, the premium creators on our site, as well as any creator who helps support and get that successful. Oh, wow. So all songs start out free. There's no like the song is better than that. Like all songs get an equal starting point. And then should a song reach that tipping level of success, it'll go to premium. But again, anyone who's already downloaded it, even if they're free creator, they're going to continue to have access to it. They were part of that song story. Got it. That's cool. So it rewards the people that kind of help the song rise. Exactly. Right. That community of like, hey, you were my street team for this song. Like you got it there. Like we're not going to penalize you because you were part of its success. I love that. I love that. Oh, so much great stuff. And I love this model. This is a model I haven't really seen before. I mean, there's obviously there's companies out there that do licensing and, you know, but this is just more of a, a connection totally, a way to yeah. connect people. That's not, I know it just, it feels a lot more organic and it feels a lot more community based versus like, you know, the whole licensing thing of a how, how, how it's been done in the past. I love that. That's definitely our goal and our, our, our sentiment as a company of like, you know, we're not trying to be, you know, it's a, it's we're using sync mod, sync as a tool, but it's not about what we're about, right? We're about the creation process and bringing these creatives together. And we can do influencer marketing for music artists in a very meaningful way. And the mechanism just happens to be through syncing the song on YouTube videos. But again, that's not the, the value about it, right? When you go and do other promotional platforms and you're doing brand deals or whatever, you wouldn't necessarily call it a sync era. Like you, maybe it's a product placement, right. um, but it's just kind of the mechanism. So it's like, we're not trying to be that part of it. We find that a lot of our artists are able to define their success, how they want it, which is what I'm all about. Like let let them be their CEO of their own company if they want to go and remain independent and have a thriving income and go tour, go do additional sync licensing with brands, like whatever that is, or if they want to sign a label deal, like balls in their court. And it's just, how do we bring these people together so they can each thrive and build out their own business as they see fit? Love it. Love it. Well, is there anything else that we need to know that we haven't covered about thematic or how it can help indie artists? And also how do they get started? I would love to hear anybody's music. Who's just trying to get it out there. Like I, we listen to every song. We make sure that it's, you know, the rights are there. It's cleared, but I would say if you want to submit a song, uh, it's hello thematic.com slash artists. You can also get a link. If you just go to hello thematic.com, um, We have a really cool creative community. We have a a private discord where all of the types of creators can come together and like support each other, get feedback. So if you're looking to get your music out there, uh, meet some cool people and do some cool things, uh, I'm all about it. That is awesome. Love it. And how, and are you guys on social? Can they connect with you there? Uh, Yeah, we're on social. I think pretty much everywhere at Hello Thematic. Um, We're on Instagram. TikTok, Twitter, you name it. We're, we're probably there. And if we're not, send us a message and then we'll be there. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll find you. We'll, we'll get to you. But yeah, and it's like, especially if you're listening and like, you know, drop us a note uh, that you heard us on the Profitable Musician Show and I'd be sure to give it some at- extra love and attention. Awesome. Thank you so much, Audrey. This has been really great. And I always just love shining a light on new ways that musicians can make money, get attention on their music that will help them get money in the future, you know, build their fan base, which is their asset pool to then eventually make money. You know, there's so many roads to income and this can definitely be one of them for artists. So thank you for providing this service and thank you for letting everybody know how it works. Thank you so much for having me, Brie. I really appreciated our conversation and it's great to talk with cool people like you who are doing amazing things for music artists. Thanks. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. 
thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.